being in a gathering and sticking out like a sore thumb because you're either overdressed or underdressed is never a fun experience. And that's why, ladies, we have dress codes because they help guiding you in the right direction and they help making you always feel at ease in any circumstances. And today I'm going to go over those seven most common dress code mistakes that people make that unfortunately embarrass them. And ladies, I don't want you to make those mistakes. So let's start with point number one. I actually thought that everyone knew that to a wedding, you're not supposed to wear white or cream color or anything similar to what the bride is wearing. And that is incredibly inappropriate. But there are more things that are also inappropriate to wear to a wedding. A general rule is to never upstage the bride. It's her day to shine and you don't want to be the one wearing something where all eyes are on you and not on the bride. For this reason, you should not have a dress that is more flamboyant than what the bride is wearing. You also need to think about that weddings in general are quite conservative, meaning that you have all kinds of people gathered there. You have also all kinds of generations gathered. You will have someone's grandparents, someone's parents, in-laws, you name it. And for this reason, you need to pay attention to what you wear. You cannot put on your sexy show. You have to be mindful that you don't want someone's grandpa to be staring down your cleavage, as an example. I would avoid wearing crop tops. I would avoid wearing, you know, dresses that have cutouts on the side or if they have some form of mesh on the side short skirts or very deep plunging necklines or any clothes where you would think that you know what I think that is more suitable for a nightclub rather than a wedding so be mindful of what you as a guest decide to wear and lastly on the wedding dress coat if there is a dress code, make sure you stick to it. If the invitation says white tie, that means it's white tie. Don't arrive in a cocktail dress. So what should we wear to a wedding? Maybe a nice dress like this, if the invitation says cocktail as an example, but you can also wear these type of dresses even if the invitation says black tie, because oftentimes cocktail attire becomes optional when it is black tie. Unfortunately, at some point, we all have to attend a funeral. And we need to really think about that at a funeral, there is such a thing as a dress code. People don't always pay attention to this. And it's incredibly disrespectful for the families in particular who are mourning. There are some things that I believe one should never wear to a funeral. And that would be mini skirts or mini dresses or anything where you really show off a lot of skin. It's very inappropriate. And especially if the funeral is in some form of a holy place or, or a church of some sort, you really have to cover up. Other things that I find very inappropriate is when people don't make enough effort dressing up to a funeral. Believe it or not, some people come in t-shirts. And first of all, it's very distracting if you're wearing a t-shirt, not only because it looks very laid back, but some t-shirts even have big graphic prints. Then you also have those who don't respect the fact that at a funeral you're supposed to wear black. Navy is accepted as well, but some people come in in whatever colors and they just don't bother. Another thing to pay attention to, flashy accessories should be kept at a minimum. No matter if you have beautiful jewelry, a funeral is really not the right place to show those things off because you want to be very discreet at a funeral. You want to keep it minimal. You don't want anything distracting and wearing your biggest diamonds so they sparkle in people's eyes. I think it's a little bit on the tacky side. Surely you can wear a nice pearl necklace or accessorize a little bit, but just keep it at a minimum and never flashy. So what to wear to a funeral? Ladies, I think black is given. So you should wear some form of conservative uh, black dress or a black suit or maybe some skirt type of suit. You can also wear navy, that works too. If you want to wear some form of skirt or dress, don't go floor length because it's not appropriate and neither should you go mini or above the knee because that can be too revealing and distracting for a funeral. And now let's talk about a big pet peeve of mine. Some of you know that I love going to the opera and to the theater. But oh my, do I feel sometimes a little bit hurt in my eyes when I see what people are wearing to such events. Now let me tell you one thing. Officially, most opera and theaters don't really have a strict dress code. However, 
People really let loose these days in 2022 when they go to the theater. They really don't care what they wear. And that really makes me so sad because going to the opera, going to the theater used to be kind of a sacred, special tradition for people. I remember once when I went to the opera in Vienna, most people did not dress up at all. You would see people wear their daytime clothes, oftentimes wrinkly. People would wear their shorts, some t-shirts. I even remember there was one girl who passed me and she was wearing a crop top and a hot pant. I mean, in the opera? Really? And then I remember once I went to the theater in London. <laughs> I was shocked when I saw a man wearing his gray sweatpants with white stains on. I remember once someone shared with me that they went to the opera and they had a man sitting next to them wearing, you know, a wife beater style of tank top. And she was literally rubbing shoulders with this man and she could, you know, feel his sweaty, sticky, sticky skin because he was wearing this tank top and not covering up. Other things that you have shared with me, ladies, are that people sometimes wear athlete leisure, flip-flops, that they bring large bags with them inside, inside the theater. And you should not do that because is gonna be in the way for people especially if they have to pass you so that's a big no-no but what should we wear to the opera or to the theater well since there is no official dress code really I would just really make an effort I once wore this dress to the opera and for me that felt fine because for me such event is a celebratory event but you don't have to dress up so that you have to wear a ball gown or some fancy cocktail dress I would just wear a cute dress that makes you feel put together, maybe a nice pair of heels, but you don't have to do like stilettos or anything like that. Just something simple, maybe a nice pair of pumps. Here's this video that I'm gonna share exclusively and privately only because yes, it's that embarrassing. If you go to levelupsecret.com, you will be able to register for free to take part of this video where actually I share some awful mistakes that I've made in my life that I'm not proud of, but I want you to take part of them so that you can learn from my mistakes and not to make them and save yourself a lot of hassle a lot of time and save yourself some missed opportunities that might happen otherwise so ladies go to levelupsecret.com and get hold of this exclusive video hurry up because soon it's going to disappear and then it will never appear on the internet again another thing that one would think is common sense wasn't actually common sense even for me when i was young i guess these things happen when I was 19, I entered a church with my spaghetti strap tops and a pair of denim shorts. And I had someone working there got really angry at me and really told me off. And I learned my lesson then because I would today never enter a holy place, a spiritual place or a church with the wrong attire. There is a dress code for these type of venues because think about it this way. They have their beliefs, they're oftentimes very conservative, and they might have some very specific rules. And it is very important that we follow those rules, whether we belong to that religion or not. But if we are visiting their holy place, then we abide by their rules. Greece would be a good example. They have many churches, by the way, and you would see tourists who are wearing beach clothes. They're wearing some form of see-through tunic and then underneath you can see their bikini and then they just enter church like that. And it's not uncommon, it happens all the time. And you would think that people have more common sense than this, but actually, it seems like people either don't care because I think most people know about this. Do you know about this, ladies? Please leave me a comment below and let me know if you have seen this happen. So what would I recommend you to wear? Especially if you are a tourist coming to Europe in summer and you're gonna be doing loads of sightseeing. Well, I would definitely wear something like a shirt dress because a shirt dress is fairly covering. And you can definitely enter a church because your shoulders are covered and then you have a skirt that is minimum knee length. So for me, that would be a perfect tourist look. That is also perfect. Perfect for churches. So what do we wear to an interview? And ladies, 
Times have changed, as you probably know by now. So today we don't really have to wear a business suit to an interview. Well, it kind of depends on profession. And I would actually categorize it in three categories of what to wear to a job interview. Because if we generalize it, literally there are three groups of professions. There's the group one, which is more kind of the relaxed profession, when you can come as you are, pretty much. And those professions could be creative jobs or maybe maybe some tech jobs, or maybe just regular casual jobs. So for that type of job interview, you can really come as you are. I mean, of course, you shouldn't appear in a complete slacker outfit. Maybe you would wear a pair of jeans, a nice top, and some flat shoes, and that would be perfectly fine and appropriate for that type of interview. Then we have group number two, and that's when maybe some formal business dress code should be applied. And I'm talking about like all high level jobs that require the person to look a little bit more corporate, a little bit more formal. It can be maybe lawyers, it can be some CEOs, it can be any form of high level office job really. Or sometimes it can be just that you have a senior position somewhere, so you need to look the part. So for a job interview in that case, we would avoid wearing, let's say, open toe shoes. We would instead wear shoes that have a closed toe. We would also avoid wearing sleeveless tops because it's important to cover your shoulders. We would also not wear high heels like stilettos. We would wear a lower heel, something a little bit more modest. And the same goes for colors. We would go for black, we would go for navy, for gray, or maybe some form of neutral colors. We wouldn't go all in on colors or patterns and prints. We would keep it modest. In group number three, you don't have to keep it modest at all. Because here we're talking about the more kind of hip and trendy type of jobs where you can be a little bit more fashionable. Well, actually, it's appropriate for you to be fashionable. And I'm talking about jobs perhaps where, let's say you work in fashion, or let's say you work in some form of agency where you have to represent the company in a certain way because your personal branding aligns with the type of work that you do. You don't necessarily have to flaunt with expensive things. That might actually not be appropriate for any category of job. So make sure you don't bring your Hermes Birkin bags to an interview because you really don't want to be flashy. But I'm talking about that in group number three. It's usually more common that you express your personality through your style and that you want to look a little bit more hip, a little bit more trendy, or just stylish in general. This point is my personal opinion. I need to make that clear because this is not a dress code rule. So I want to talk to you a little bit about TikTok. And of course, TikTok doesn't have a dress code. But I have a personal opinion that I would like to know. Am I the only one having these thoughts? Or maybe, do you also have some of these thoughts too? What on earth are people wearing when they film these TikToks that are seen by millions of people? I mean, here we have someone who is a business coach and clearly didn't even bother brushing her hair. She's wearing a bikini underneath <laughs> that sweater, no makeup. I don't know what this t-shirt is. It looks very kind of old and worn out, not very representable. And then overall, we just have these people dancing in like their PJs. And it makes me wonder, if you know that you want to record a TikTok, and let's say in that moment you're wearing your PJs, but why can't you just like change, you know, maybe brush your hair. You don't have to dress up. You don't have to wear a gown, but you can wear normal clothes. You don't have to wear your pajama. Everyone on TikTok wears either leggings or some form of hot pants and then a lot of hoodies. Is that the dress code for TikTok? Hoodies? There are two types of restaurants. No, actually there are three types, but you know, the fast food ones we don't want to really talk about on this channel. But there are two types of restaurants. You have the casual ones and then you have the more fancy high-end ones. And the fancy restaurants don't necessarily have to be a Michelin star restaurant. Those type of restaurants could be, let's say, Cipriani or Nobo or Zuma. But then you see that some people go to these places and they don't dress up at all. Actually, they wear their sneakers, they wear their t-shirt, their sweatpants, 
Yes, I see a lot of sweatpants. Honestly, in London, I don't know what is going on there. You go to Nobor Zuma and there is like, okay, every other sweatpants sitting in there. I understand that not everybody wants to wear heels and dresses and fancy things, but I think it's common sense for a man, let's say, if you go out for dinner at night, that at least he wears a shirt to a restaurant and not necessarily some t-shirt or a sweatpants. Or if you are a lady, you would wear at least a little heel or some nicer evening shoes instead of arriving in sneakers. You would also make a little bit of effort, maybe wearing a little dress or maybe a nice tailored trouser of some sort. It's not about that it has to be a fashion show, but try to just make a little bit of an effort. This is more of a high-end restaurant, meaning that you should also look a little bit more high-end, not like you are sitting on your sofa at home having takeaway. And again, it's not about that you need to wear expensive items, and you might think like, yeah, but Anna, not everybody can afford, you know, dressing up. I think everyone has a nice dress or a shirt at home. I think everyone at some point will attend a wedding or a funeral and, and they will have some form of attire that would match that level of formality. So why not wear that when you go out for dinner? Why not wear that when you go to the opera? Why do you have to go with your sneakers and, and with your sweatpants or leggings or t-shirts or whatever it is just because you like comfort? But you can actually be comfortable even wearing something a little bit more formal. As an example, this dress that I'm wearing right now, I'm not saying you have to wear this kind of dress when you go for dinner, but do you know how comfortable this dress is? I can breathe, I can move around, I feel really at ease. So I don't buy the thing that, yes, but I wanna be comfortable. You can be comfortable even in more formal looking clothes. That's not an excuse to wear those sweatpants. Now, as you know, I teach you more on how to look expensive and put together on this channel. And right here, I have an amazing video for you that I don't want you to miss. So make sure you hop on over to that video because I will see you there.